Okay, what's going on guys? We're doing the Frozen Throne on Veteran Mode. We have our level 10 starter hero. And then for the towers, we have the Inferno Mage, the Furnace, the Goblin Rockets, the Archers, and the Ogre Den. Some of my favorite towers. We have a fully upgraded tree with the Demon Guards for the reinforcements. Let's go ahead and get into the mission. Here we go. You managed to get here. But, like winter, I cannot be stopped. Well, we'll see about that, won't we? So, here we go. We're going to start with some Ogre Dens. And I have a very specific setup I use. So, the Ogre Dens rockets. And then in the central roundabout, we're going to put a Furnace. And then we have our level 3 Inferno Mage over on the left-hand side. And our hero is just going to chill kind of around this area. We're going to call the wave in. That puts us at 60 gold. We don't have a lot of gold to spare, but this first wave is not the problem. It's actually the second one that we have to worry about. It's where the ice giants come in. And kind of like the earlier levels, we had to worry about those ice giants coming in early. And that really tested our defenses to make sure we had enough defense. So you can see that little crazy snowman thing that ran by. That's just a little achievement you can get. Just simply click on the ski, on the skier, and the snowman will eat him. And you'll get an achievement. I've already got it, so I'm not going to click on it. Well, I think I do click on it later, but yeah, it's just a little achievement. But anywho, we're going to drop our hero power and our reinforcements on the left-hand side. And then our hero can stand over in the central area to help out the ogre den. This is like the last, this is the last campaign. So for me in the series, it's the last campaign mission. So kind of exciting. It's like a grand finale. We get a little boss fight at the end. And, yeah, it's a fun level. No doubt about it. There will be an Iron Challenge and a Heroic Challenge, of course, but this is the final campaign, so enjoy this one. This is, all, this is the last campaign mission you will see of Kingdom Rush Vengeance. So, the second wave is the tough one, you can see there. We needed to take out the Ice Giants on the left-hand side, and our hero has to kill off the Apex Stalkers on the central area. That's why I have him standing there. And that's why we needed the level 3 mage tower, but you can see they are falling pretty cleanly. The hero is really, really good at taking out these apex stalkers. I found that out. He does enough damage to just chew through these, chew through their health bars. We just have to be really careful on this left-hand side that the ice giants don't leave the range of the inferno tower. And I had to drop a soul impact to kill off that little apex shard that would have gotten away. So you can see, as the ogre dens start to die, we just upgrade the tower. So we end up, I think we end up with a level 3 ogre tower by the end of that third second wave, but that's okay. That is a very necessary upgrade to beat this level. And because this is a campaign mission, the clearing the ice golem, or the snow golems costs 200 gold. So keep your 200 gold in the bank. Do not spend it because there will be many situations and we're going to have to clear off the snow golems and if you don't clear off the snow golems you'll probably lose the game so hold on to that gold sir don't spend it all in one place um this, these spirits the titans we're going to try to kill them off and in, in a way that makes sure their spirits the little souls actually die because we do not want the soul spawning in fact i just panicked there and i dropped a soul impact just to make sure it died because i did not want it respawning you can see the snow golem shaking over on the left hand side. We had to pay that 200 gold to clear it off. That is another titan down. Look at the soul. He's making a, a dash for freedom. But with the inferno tower there, it should be enough to kill it off. Maybe not. Oh no, it's not. Oh no, disaster. It was able to respawn. Look at them, two of them respawn. This is actually quite a... Uh, Quite the unfortunate circumstance. Fortunately, the wave four is pretty mild, um, and they take the long way. So as long as you have that level three mage tower there, because they have to take the long way. Um, once they get in range of the inferno tower, they should die. So if you can weather that storm, you should be in pretty good shape. We're gonna drop a soul impact just to kill off some of these droughts that they're starting to clump up. And with our gold, we upgrade our rockets. That's really going to help us out here. It's one soul down. Let's see if the second soul dies. 
One more shot. There we go. Okay. So the souls are out of the way. That was a hurdle we had to get over. Things are looking very positive now. These droughts will just get absolutely cleaned up by the rockets and our hero stalling. The furnace is in a very good location because it just hits so many targets. It's very nice. And we'll go ahead and call the wave in. It's inevitable. We just might as well get a little bit of a bonus. So those little apex stalkers aren't too big of a problem with our hero standing there. But they are running. We're going to drop a hero power or a reinforcement to try to stall them out a bit. We want them to kind of stay in range of the rockets as long as possible. And I drop a soul impact because I want to kill off these stalkers. And I spend money to upgrade the archer tower. I feel like that's more important right now than the furnace. There will be a time to upgrade the furnace later on. So try to make sure your hero is always doing something. It's easy to kind of like get distracted and he just sort of stands there. But if he's not positioned correctly, sometimes he just doesn't do anything. Now these ice witches coming over on the left hand side, always distract them. Um, we're going to hopefully get enough money, there we go, to clear off that snow golem. Because we don't want that snow golem waking up. And we're just going to move our hero over here. Um, he's actually not the best at taking out the ice, the snow witches. So I move him back down. I realize this snow golem, the second one, is inevitable. It's, I don't have the money to stop it. So it is going to spawn. And I have to have my hero to deal with it in that center lane. Very unfortunate it was able to spawn, but alas, I did not have the gold. So I feel like it was probably more important to clear off the one on the left-hand side. So the snowmen, the snow mages, whatever you want to call them, they are capable of freezing your towers, as you can see. So it's going to be a little mini game of clicking really quickly to try to break off the ice and make sure those towers and the furnace keep up their DPS. And that is going to be a theme throughout this mission. You will see at the end of the, in the final fight just how much clicking we'll be doing. This is probably one of the reasons why this game is very suited for a mobile game. Um, I'm using an emulator, of course, I'm using Bluestack, so I'm actually playing on a PC, but this is a primarily a iOS and Android game. Now, level 3 Mage Tower on the right-hand side. So you should have two level 3 Inferno Towers at this point, and we're just going to upgrade our Archer Towers over our Furnace. Archer Towers just do really good DPS, and they're really good for the cost. Early game to get those Archer Towers up. So, not too bad. A wave seven is pretty tame as long as we can get past these little soul things. And we are almost halfway through the mission so far. We're going to call it in pretty early, get a nice reset. 36 bonus gold. And the way we structure our towers is important because you notice there's really no place an enemy can stand without being attacked and receiving both kinds of damage, receiving magic damage and physical damage. So it's a very good split. And when the Ice Lords come later, they can shift their resistances between the two forms of damage, so it's very important to have both. Now there's a lot of enemies here. We're going to be plumping our hero power and our reinforcements down. Because of that level 3 Ogre Den on the left-hand side, it's enough to tank out these icy uh, Reaper things. And another ice golem, a snow golem is down. We're going to spend the money to clear off two of the ones deep into our lines because we don't want those things waking up. And it doesn't seem to um, affect their spawn rate. I think there's just a fixed spawn per wave. Like snow golems just kind of have a time where they're going to wake up. And it doesn't seem to matter if you pay the gold early to... It doesn't change the fact that some of them are just going to wake up at certain points in the game. So you can, I would recommend, you know, when you have the money, to periodically just clear off the snow golems. But realize that some of them are just going to be programmed to wake up at a certain wave. And even the fact that you paid extra money early on to clear off a different one isn't going to change that fact. So you might be paying extra money. You might find yourself, you know, spending lots of money to clear off the snow golems, and some of the ones are still going to wake up. So it may be worth playing through and just marking down which snow golems. Uh, wake up at which waves 
and then just have your gold planned out for that mission. Or you can just watch me. So you can see another one I don't have the money for, so I'm moving my hero over to the left-hand side. And he's going to have to deal with this. Because we have the level 3 mage tower, so it should be enough to deal with the snow the ice giants on the right-hand side. We're going to drop a soul impact, though, on the left to try to clear off these droughts. So we can focus only on the snow golems. You can see just how frustrating enemies these are, man. So tanky. Takes so long to kill. Now, archers are actually somewhat decent against them because they don't have any armor. They just have a lot of health. And we're putting another rocket tower in the back. I feel like it's a good idea because you can see the enemies will clump up next to the barracks. And then they just take so much damage from this back rocket tower. Now, wave 11, we get just tons and tons of these spirit things. Ideally, we want to try to kill off the ice giants before we deal with the spirits. And we want them to die in a way where the souls will be able to quickly be killed up. So you can see I tried to stagger them a little bit so that soul would die to the Inferno Tower. What we don't want is for the soul to slip in between the titans and not die. And then be able to respawn. That, that's really bad. So our hero is doing a good job of taking out the ice giants, and we're going to move him over to the center now. We should, uh, with a little bit of, with our hero power, we're able to stall out the ice giant to take a couple more shots, and it is dead. So the scary part is, for the most part, over. Um, unfortunately, that that spirit did get a resummon, but I think that that's the only one that was able to do that. I'm pretty sure. So yeah. Um, they're making their dash for freedom, but that Inferno Mage, so much damage. Now, these Ice Lords, these are the guys that poison your hero, and they have a lot of resistances, so these are the main the main threat. And we have a fully upgraded Ogre Tower now, a fully upgraded Rocket Tower on Wave 12, and we're upgrading our Furnace as well. I would have your hero to try to isolate these Ice Lords as best as possible, and they just kind of pay attention to the left-hand side where these ice giants are coming. Make sure they don't get out of range of the mage tower. Because if they do, that's really bad. And I'm also paying the money to clear off some of these snow golems. Because I don't want them spawning. Another soul impact. And that is a dead ice giant. Our hero is currently dead from the poison. But he'll come back. And there we go. Another major threat eliminated. Wave 13. Just lots and lots of droughts. We go ahead and upgrade our furnace to level 4 now. And that is going to do massive damage to these droughts. Just slaughter them. That, along with the archer towers, will make pretty short work of them. And as you can see from the map, most of these snow golems have already been taken care of. I think there's only one left on the far right-hand side, but that's okay. It will die. We'll clear it up eventually. And speaking of eventually, it just I cleared it up now. So this is, I would call wave 13 like a preparation wave. If you have your tower set up like so, it's not you're not going to have any trouble. Um, just wait for a critical mass, drop your soul impact, get a nice reset, take the money, and prepare for the 14th and the 15th wave. As far as upgrades go, I kind of debate on what to do. I have enough money to get the Archer Tower on the left-hand side fully upgraded, but because there are going to be some really strong enemies coming, I kind of want to get upgrades for the mage tower and the archer tower so you can see we put a points into the corrupting arrows and i also choose i think i upgrade the rocket tower as well but the corrupting arrows are going to be really good against these ice lords when you see your hero poisoned like he is right now i would just run him into the ice lords and have him suicide i don't know why i'm keeping him back he's not very useful and he's going to eventually die. There's nothing I can do to stop that. So the sooner he dies, the sooner he can come back without the poison on. 
maybe that was a little mistake. I think I wanted the Ice Titans to get staggered a little bit, but in either event, he should have been there taking hits. But we're going to put some points into the Inferno Tower. And we're trying to get everything grouped up so we can get a nice soul impact. I think this is like one of the ways why having the Inferno Towers is so important. And I feel like this is one example of where they're better than the Mausoleums. Because single target damage they do a lot more. And you'll often find later in the missions where you'll have the Mausoleums and they just don't do enough damage to clear off some of the heavy stuff. Like you can get some possessions in which are really clutch, but... I feel like just for pure damage, the Inferno Towers are just better. And when there's really heavy guys like this, you want the Inferno Towers doing as much damage as possible. So, But that is the last of the Ice Lords dead from Wave 14. This is the Wave 15th wave where the game just throws everything tanky they have at you. So you can see I'm upgrading the Rocket Tower. I also put some points into the Mage Towers. The Corrupting Runes on the Mage Tower are very nice to do as much damage as possible. Everything starts to converge over on this left-hand side, so we upgraded the Ogre Den and the Archer Tower, and we have a pretty solid defense. If we can clear off these guys, we should be ready for the final boss. And our hero now just trying to tank out. He's about to dive. We're going to put some points into the health so that they will regenerate a little bit faster. Um, I don't. I think our ogre. We want our ogres lasting as long as possible. That little soul thing is trying to make it. But that choke. That's a pretty effective choke point, and the wave kind of converges in a way where it makes the ogres really effective because they can just stand there and clump up the whole wave. When you have towers and you're able to build them in tight succession, it's pretty effective. Behold, mortals, winter has arrived. Uh-oh. The winter queen, here we go. Did not rip off Narnia at all, no way. So this winter queen, I would not call this a terribly difficult fight from a strategic standpoint. I didn't have to like really modify my strategy all that much. I drop a soul impact just to try to get some damage on her. She does a lot of damage to the, or well, anything really, um, like any kind of reinforcements, but overall she just freezes your towers and that's really annoying. Um, so I just had the spam click. Spam tapping would be a lot more effective if you were doing this on a phone or a tablet, but Spam clicking is, is fine. We're going to try to use our hero just to stall her out. And we're going to upgrade the furnace to do that area damage. The scorched earth upgrade is nice. Especially against these draught things. And generally, yeah, we just want our tier heroes, or our towers, to try to isolate her as much as possible. It's very difficult with all the droughts in the way. So if we can kill the droughts quickly, we can isolate her. And she also likes to freeze her towers constantly. Like, I'm talking every couple seconds she's freezing multiple towers. Just super, super annoying. This is quite possibly the most click-intensive level in the game. I think it might be. There's just so much going on. And it's basically just a race to do as much damage as possible before she makes it deep into your lines. Now, fortunately, our towers are holding very well on their own because it's just mostly draughts and a couple ice lords. So, you know, if you had the DPS, you can, you should be fine. I would probably put our hero right in front of her. He's just killing draughts right now. But I kind of use him as just damage control when I see something trying to slip by. Um, you can see she's slowly making her way to the left side and down. And we're upgrading this. Um, we're upgrading the rockets in the very back. That's going to be a very important tower at the very end here, as you will see soon. We're trying to upgrade our ogres as well, just so they can tank out a little bit longer. But her ice ice spears are very, very strong, and they will slaughter your ogres. They, but they do buy time. You know, it's, it's not like the pond of the sage where he just instantly eats them. So she is slowly dying. You can see she has maybe 10% HP, 5% HP. Um, this rocket is doing so much damage in the back, you can see just her health is getting chunked, and that is it. More than a legend unlocked. Game is over. Hope you guys enjoyed that.
I will see you in the next video.